from Sweden. It's sort of. In this game, he will be known as Alliance So, which you can interpret in numerous ways. Um, but we'll just interpret it, it as it is meant to be, as uh, Alliance Sort of, here in the upper right hand corner. In the lower left, we have the Orange Zerg player from AT Gaming, the newest pickup from AT Gaming actually. Um, it's Jonah, a very solid player. He's a GM level Zerg player and really excited to see how he's going to do here against uh, sort of some really, really, uh, you know, a, a really tough opponent in all honesty. As uh, both of these players here open hatch first into pool. Uh, but Jonah actually going for his gas before his pool, so a little bit of a change up here. So yeah, we got a pretty sweet CVZ on our hands here. Uh, I, I'm really pleased that I didn't actually get kicked out this game because I was almost 100% certain that someone, that another caster was going to come along and be like, sorry, we're taking sort of winning matches. I was going to be like, oh, and I've been like holding my breath for like the last hour thinking, are we going to get it? Are we going to get it? Are we going to get it? And guess what? We got it. So uh, yes, this is really sick. And after this series, guys, we should head into another ZVZ between the loser of this map and the winner of the losers match in this group, which is between Philandros and Solo. All right, well, we've got some cheers coming down in the chat as, uh, well, let's just quickly say what's going on. Sort of is playing uh, Gasless here. To start things out, he's got a couple of links on the way in a spam call to be nice and safe. Probably going to look to head straight into Roaches if he doesn't take a single gas sometime soon. Jonah, of course, he already uh, he got that gas before his pool after the hatch first. And he's still mining in it. He's mining quite a bit. So we're probably going to see a bin in this come down for him very soon. And he's probably going to get aggressive because he's got his Zergen speed on the way already. He's not investing in a defensive spam crawler. So all in all, this would suggest... That uh, sort of gonna get a gr uh, sorry Jonah gonna get a bit aggressive here and there's that bin and there's six more lings on the way but sort of with two lings may be able to get the scout off here Queen's gonna try and block it as best he can but Zergling's on creep there get by pretty quickly one Zergling left he's gonna spot the gas is still mining he's gonna be able to click on this uh, if he wants to to see how much gas is mined but uh, he doesn't he just sees that bin and nest and that's pretty much enough information for him as uh, a couple of lings from uh, Jonah. Do not get a drone. Very close to that, though. All right, so we have Optimus and Agaham, uh, teammates of uh, Jonah, both uh, throwing their, raising their Jonas in the sky. And uh, we've got Sick of Games tuned for uh, Sort Of. So, uh, uh, as he's actually modding his stream. You know, actually, that's something else. I mean, maybe it was in the TL Power, uh, T Team Liquid Power Ranking. Uh, I think they said Sort Of has looked really good on stream, but we just haven't seen him in any tournaments. All right, well, let's see how this goes. Hello, guys, and welcome to the stream. And let's really start again to this game now, because things are starting to happen. Rotron and double Evo Chamber for sort of pretty standard from, uh, from any kind of uh, follow-up. But Jonah is going to morph his failings right in front of his opponent. Well, this is questionable. His uh, first uh, wave of Zergens, but the Queen pulls back to deny uh, any further... Uh, uh, oh, the Queen just didn't have a transfuse just uh, in time there. Balans are going to come forward here, They're going to, uh, Balans are going to come through and one transfuse goes down, the Balans are continuing to be a little bit stuck actually and Jonah's kind of trying to fight his way through, another Balan goes off, another Balan maybe to try and get through but look at this wall that sort of has made, he has just kind of walled himself off pretty much perfectly I would say, I mean there's no real other way to describe this, it's uh, he kind of reacted perfectly and now he's kind of got a really weird wall off at the front but he's um gonna be oh no oh no boom no that wasn't the boom i was expecting we wanted a better boom oh well now there's a lot of evil chambers sort of he can go into quad upgrades from here you know get uh get melee get uh <laughs> can you imagine get melee carapers missiles and then just want to look pretty i mean this one's gonna die anyway so he's got a backup Ready and planned. So, uh, Jonah's actually going to continue this attack. Um, behind this, he's actually taking a third base. So, you know, he's taking some advantage from this. But uh, Sword of is already heading into a lane. Of course, with a Rotron already down, it's kind of pretty hard for Jonah to... Uh, I mean, what's the word count side? 32 to 33. I mean, the real problem for Jonah is he's going to be behind in terms of Roach upgrades. And he's going to be behind probably in terms of Roach count as well. Uh, you can see already a lot of Roaches out here for his opponent. So, Jonah not really... 
in the best of spots right now, but he's not in this position where it's kind of impossible to come back from. You saw his own Evo Chamber, so his upgrade should be about a minute and a minute ish behind that of uh, sort of. But uh, I mean, sort of. Just, uh, I think he knew this was coming for quite some time after he got that scout off over here, and uh, he came in here and he was like, "Ah, I see. Uh, you've got a Bane nest. You've got speed and whatever." And I think he knew that was coming. And, you know, he timed his wall perfectly, and then he added to his wall off as well, even though it wasn't really needed in the end either. So yeah, we've got a third base on the way for Jonah, but again, uh, you know, the third base is nice, but it's not really going to change much. I mean, he's not really going to get that much out of it that his opponent isn't, and I think with the plus one time from the roaches of sort of, and the fact he'll probably still have more roaches too, because they're fairly even in work accounts, I still feel like sort of's got an opportunity to move across the map and maybe even do some pretty good damage to Jonah. You might even be able to kill this third base if Jonah isn't in a position where he can defend it easily. But look at this, he knows he needs to buy some time and so he tries a counterattack with his speed lanes but sort of kind of has enough here to just def uh, deflect that for now and his roaches continue to march across the map here. Plus one is going to finish very soon so is Cloud Reconstitution. And uh, this attack continues to come forward. Five Zerglings continuing on forward and Jonah just evacuates his third base immediately here. He knows he cannot hold on to this, so uh, he's actually even droned up a bit since uh, <clears throat> since uh, I last looked at the work account. So, you know, his work account's good, but he doesn't have a third base to mine from right now, and he doesn't really have any roaches either. Look at that, 40 for two units killed for sort of. What, uh, what units are, let's see, so there's 18 roaches against now 10, but again, they've got plus one as well, and that's pretty huge. A uh, pretty huge difference, that plus one. As, uh, oh, now some roaches are going to get caught for Jonah as well. And this is just a uh, bit of a tough spot in all honesty. Um, pretty much everything is just going to go down here, I suppose, as uh, all of these roaches are going to get cleaned out. And, uh, I mean, well, yeah, okay, okay. So Jonah's re expanding here and there's roaches still up here. I was like, well, somehow Jonah's actually killed off the roaches. Then I was like, oh, there's, there's roaches up here as well. So. Again, I mean, Jonah's just really far behind. He invested in an attack which didn't work against a fairly greedy opening from sort of, you know, the gasless play into uh, into roaches is one of the strongest things to do is if your opponent commits too much to anything else and you take no damage because you have a roaches and upgrades immediately very soon after and it just doesn't give your opponent any time at all to recover. And you can see, yeah, Jonah's trying to do his best he can. So there's just not the roaches here for him. His plus one may finally be about to finish. But again, he just doesn't have the numbers for that to be a, uh, of importance. He sort of takes game number one without too much of a, too much of a trouble at all, in all honesty, um, against Jonas. So sort of a solid game number one from him to start off the <clears throat> the second series for him. This is a um, the winners match, by the way, guys. So. Um, Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, the winners match. So the winner of this moves through into the round of 64 into group stage two to be played later on today. Um, the loser of this will drop down to that dis final decider match where the winner of Philandros versus Solo will uh, go up against them. And we're again probably going to cast that match. Kind of depends. Maybe we can sneak into something uh, for you guys. Maybe uh, you guys maybe find a bit more exciting. But uh, that's what I've booked us in for. Uh, <laughs> for now so we've got our players in our lobby and oh they've spoilt it the classic overgrowth is going to come out the first time we've seen it today well guys we got through four series without seeing it i guess the fifth series is um was was maybe asking a bit too much but th this is just the classic as well it's like the classic like one two punch frost overgrowth classic two maps which are just very standard and well what more, what more can you say than that? These maps are stand. One thing I think about Overgrowth is, maybe not so much now, but when it first came out, a lot of players were like, wow, this map's really good for just splitting your map on, you know? And that's, I think, is what a lot of people like about it. It's just so easy to defend all of your bases. You can go up to five bases very easily, I feel, on this map. But um, anyway, let's, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let me just set the scoreboard. And uh, let's go in and introduce... Our two players in the lower left hand corner. In the blue from Alliance. It's going to be sort of. He is of course from Sweden. 
And uh, no surprise to see him at DreamHack Summer. Hopefully, he pulls out a good performance. I know a lot of people are really rooting for him to uh, kind of make a make a breakthrough again. I mean, there was this time where he sort of was uh, considered one of the best, more or less. I mean, at uh, Assembly... Oh, assembly... Uh, one of the Assembly tournaments. must have been the last one, I assume. But he beat Tasia in a best of five. And he also beat Happy as well, Empire Happy, when Happy was, like, really, really good. And I remember I actually had a bet on, on against him with Happy, and I was like, sort of, why you do this to me? I can't remember what it was, though. I mean, it must have been, it must have been assembly, uh, Asus ROG, because uh, they had best of five group stages. All right, let's uh, see what is going on. This time it's uh, sort of going for the pool first. Last time they both went hatch first. Uh, a bit of a smaller map here. And uh, sort of is going to opt to open for pool first instead. Jonah, once again, just going to go for the hatchery first. Not really too worried about this at all. About any kind of aggression coming out. Uh, I think Jonah's in this kind of position where he's probably going to say, you know, sort of probably is a better player than me. So I'm just going to have to play with a few risks. And, you know, if opening hatch first instead of pool first is a bit riskier, but it may put me in a bit of a better position, that's just something I'm going to risk against uh, sort of. And, of course, StarCraft... It's a game of calculated risk. It's also a game of scouting, Protoss, Dark Templar, and anything else Protoss makes. But, you know, the risk, the calculated risk, you know, calculating, you know, is he likely to early pool me? Is it worth the chance of being early pooled to get a bit of a better advantage, which I may need? And in this case, Jonah has said yes to both of those questions. And uh, hence, here we are. So it's uh, going to be a pretty slow opening uh, again here. Uh, and this time we do have a gas on either side, so a little bit different. We're going to see metabolic boost out of both of our players. And uh, yeah, we're going to see metabolic boost and we'll see where they want to go from here. We'll see if Jonah maybe just plays a little bit more defensively this time. We'll see if maybe he sort of cranks up the aggression with a bit in a nest of his own and makes some lings, goes for a bit of an attack, tries to be aggressive himself. And his uh, Zerglings there uh, looks to like sort of wins that early little Zergling exchange. And uh, exchange number two is definitely not going to go in Jonah's favour. He has to be very careful here. This is, uh, this is Tensi. Uh, might... Jonah's helping out. Oof! Oh, the Queen! W what is it with me today? I keep saying, oh, like, like, I don't know why. I'm pretty sure I've never actually said that before. But um, I've said it about 20 times today. The queen came in there and uh, one-shot that... Uh, the queen, a uh, little queen missile, is all it needed to kill off both of the zerglings there. So, in the end, Jonah wins the zergling war because of queens. It's kind of cheating, but hey ho. Now he's gonna maybe send his own zerglings across the map. And look at this, sort of. He does uh, have a bane nest down. He's uh, continued to mine with three workers in each gas. Whereas Jonah, he's actually mined up to 50 gas past speed, and then pulled out of gas, which is different. Um. Maybe that he just didn't realize. I mean, he goes back in it almost immediately now. Maybe he pulled out to try and fool Sort of, and now he's just gone back in, but he's a bit slow putting these workers back in. 12 lings on the way for Sort of means that he is wanting to go for some kind of an attack here. And uh, these two lings from uh, Jonah, just moving around, trying to spot anything. They actually missed these two lings already on the way up, which can start to morph into uh, bins a little bit quicker than uh, the rest of the Zergans, which will join them, which may be useful. And, uh, wow, sort of actually just goes straight into a Rotron here, so aggressive, definitely. I mean, is he just going to make a bunch of Roaches and attack? He definitely could. He uh, comes in now, he spots an Evolution Chamber of Jonah. Jonah not really got much else down on the map. What's this uh, Rotron and Evo? So he's going to go into Roach play immediately here. But his opponent has quite a lot of Zerglings, and, I mean, he comes in here, he kills off a Spankful immediately, he's going to get himself a... Uh, Drone trying to make an evolution chamber, and Jonah just doesn't have anything at all to defend. Uh, looks as though this queen uh, trying to buy some time. Bin's now coming in from sort of as well. He's morphing them just a little bit away, and Jonah's actually in a lot of trouble. Oh, the bailing hit is huge as they all clump into that little corner. And well, I mean, that's uh, that's uh, I mean, Jonah's just been a little bit too greedy here, and sort of he's going to follow up this attack with a big roach attack and. The problem is Jonah's really going to struggle to clean this up. He's got a few roaches on his on the way of his own, but it's just not quite going to be enough to deal with the roaches of sort of because he's losing mining time to these zerglings, and this is uh, this is really painful for Jonah. He's really just kind of getting a little bit outclassed here, 
in this game. And uh, GG is actually just going to be called right there. Uh, wow, 